Hey everybody, Pastor Stephen Anderson here from Faith Forward Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. Today I want to talk a little bit about the difference between the old IFB and the new IFB. And let me start out by just defining these terms. IFB stands for Independent Fundamental Baptist. And this has to do with the fact that in the previous generation, there was a great movement amongst Baptists known as the Independent Fundamental Baptists. And they were known for soul winning and hard preaching and the King James Bible and things like that. And so it was a great movement that did a lot of great things for God. But unfortunately, everything in this world declines over time. And, you know, it starts out great and then it kind of ends up declining. Okay. So then, you know, comes in the new IFB, which is basically a revival or renewal or resurgence within the IFB. So... Uh, you've got the independent fundamentalist Baptists, and they're kind of on the decline. They're watering down. They're scaling back, soul winning, whatever. So then you have a, a new, vibrant, renewed revival movement within the IFB, which we're calling the new IFB. But the new IFB is not exactly the same as the old IFB in its heyday. There are some distinct differences between the old IFB and the new IFB. The, the new IFB is not just taking the old IFB and just, you know, getting fired up and getting back to the uh, original principles, but rather there are some distinct differences, and that's what I want to talk about in this video. Now, first of all, let me just talk about the similarities. First of all, they're both independent fundamental Baptists. What does it mean to be independent? It means we're not part of a denomination. We're totally autonomous. We don't have financial ties with other churches. We, we stand on our own two feet. As independent fundamental Baptists, we're not members of any kind of a club or denomination or convention or anything like that. Yeah, we have our pastor friends, but some of us are friends with pastors that others aren't friends with. It's just kind of just a really loose grouping of new IFB churches. So we're both independent and we're both fundamentalists. We're both Baptists. So obviously everything that Baptists believe we have in common Obviously, we all believe in the Trinity. We believe in salvation by faith. We believe in the eternal security of the believer. We believe in the verbal inerrancy of scripture. We can go on and on about the, the obvious similarities of the fact that we're independent, we're fundamental, we're Baptist. But not only that, you know, things that have been retained from the old IFB are that, you know, we're both King James only. We've got soul winning, door to door, knocking on doors, preaching the gospel, not just a door hanger or inviting people to church or something. Hard preaching, the screaming and yelling and beating the pulpit kind of preaching. Clothing standards, meaning that we have the ladies in skirts and dresses that go at least down to the knee. And we've got the men wearing shorts and pants that at least go down to their knee. Uh, traditional music, we sing the old hymns. It's not a rock and roll contemporary style church service, and we're both IFB. So what are, what are some of the differences, though, between the old IFB and the new IFB? Well, the first one that sort of jumps out right away is that the old IFB believed in a pre-trib rapture, okay? So the old IFB is pre-trib, and the new IFB is post-trib pre-wrath, okay? So we believe that the rapture will happen after the tribulation, as Jesus said in Matthew 24, 29 through 31. But we believe that it will happen before God pours out his wrath. So at the sixth seal, sun and moon are darkened. After the tribulation, sun and moon are darkened. Jesus comes in the clouds. And then after the rapture, then he pours out his wrath on the earth. So we're post-trib pre-wrath. Old IFB is pre-trib. And that's a big thing that for the old IFB, they get really emotional about that, and uh, they get really upset when you question them on the pre-trib rapture, but frankly, they're wrong, and so that's why this change took place from old IFB to new IFB. Another big difference between the old IFB and the new IFB is that the old IFB would separate the family, meaning that they'll put the kids in junior church, they'll put the babies in the nursery, and they'll take your kids and send them off to all these different places with all these different people. Whereas the new IFB is family integrated, meaning that our church service contains every member of the family. So every baby, toddler, child, teenager, adult 
are all in the same church service. We all gather together in one place for church. And some of the reasons for this have to do with the fact that we're living in perilous times. And there are so many weirdos and predators that creep into churches that, frankly, I wouldn't want to just go to a church and have my kids being taken off to some other building, some other class with who knows who. I don't know who they're going with. You know, I want to watch my own kids and make sure that they're okay, especially little babies and toddlers and things. So that's why our church doesn't have a nursery. We don't have children's uh, church services. We have them in the main service. But another big reason is we want them to profit from and benefit from the main church service because even if they're a baby or a toddler, they're like a little sponge just absorbing everything. We want them to learn about church in a real church setting, not in a kind of dumbed down, uh, you know, animal crackers, Kool-Aid, singing a bunch of wild songs and getting a really watered down Bible lesson. We want to expose them to real preaching from day one. So we have a family integrated church service. We do not uh, separate the family. Another big difference in 2019, and it's, it's really sad to say this, but this is obvious to anyone, is that the old IFB now tolerates the LGBT. Now, you know, they might say, what? We don't tolerate that. They absolutely tolerate the LGBT. Virtually every old IFB church in 2019 now says that the LGBT are welcome to attend their services. That's what they say. I mean, that's a fact. And uh, it's ridiculous, it's bizarre, but that's what they say. You know, they will tolerate them, meaning that they'll say, hey, let's coexist with them. Let's be nice to them, love them, live next door to them, go to church with them. Whatever. Now, obviously, they do not tolerate the sin. You know, they'll basically say that it's, it's sinful, it's wrong, they're against gay marriage. And so they'll condemn the sin, but they will tolerate the LGBT people, they tolerate them. Okay, they'll, they'll bring them into the service, treat them well. Um, Dr. John Getch from West Coast Baptist College just got up and said, you know, that they deserve dignity and respect. So there you go. Uh, over here, the new IFB has zero tolerance for the LGBT and even hates the LGBT. So that this is a pretty this is a pretty stark difference. I mean, you, you're gonna have a hard time uh, convincing me or anyone else that the old IFB and the new IFB have the same position on homosexuality. It just isn't true. You know, there's a pretty stark difference here between these two things. Okay, and then not only that, but the old IFB is Zionist. Okay, and they are also pro-Jewish. Okay. So in a typical old IFB church, that you know they'll have an Israeli flag up on the platform, and they're Zionists, meaning that they believe that the land over in the Middle East belongs to the so-called nation of Israel, and that God gave them that land, and we, we the United States needs to actually support them politically, militarily, financially, if we want to be blessed by God. So the old IFB is very Zionist and very pro. Jewish, meaning that they think that the Jews are God's chosen people and that we were supposed to bless the Jews. And if we bless them, God will bless us and everything like that. Whereas the new IFB is actually uh, anti-Zionist and anti-Jewish. Okay, so, you know, we're against the religion of Judaism. Um, we believe that it's an anti-Christ religion. If, if you deny the son, you don't have the father you know, and it's antichrist. We're against the state of Israel. We're against uh, Judaism and um, just a totally different viewpoint here. And we believe in uh, what's known commonly as replacement theology or covenant theology. But basically, we do not believe that the Jews are God's chosen people. We believe that Christians are God's chosen people, that basically a spiritual nation made up of Christians has replaced the physical nation made up of, uh, you know, the Israelites. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. So, you know, they've been replaced. 
Uh, or you could look at it as that we were grafted in and they were broken off, as Romans 11 teaches. But e either way you look at it, at the end of the day, you know, Christians in the New Testament replace Old Testament uh, nation of Israel. So we're totally anti-Zionist, replacement theology. Uh, another stark difference between the old IFB and the new IFB, and again, you know, the old IFB is not going to like this, but this is very true, is that they have a policy of hiding scandals, okay? And this just happens over and over again. Whenever they have somebody who's busted being a pervert or a child molester, or adultery taking place in the church, any kind of uh, predator like that, they do not openly, publicly blow the whistle on it. They will typically hide scandal. And of course, there are exceptions to this. I'm sure that there are good old IFB churches that would not hide scandal. But over and over and over again, the old IFB hides scandal, sweeps it under the rug, and does not address it. And you'll see the same guys who've been caught being predators, they've been caught being perverts, will just be, you know, shuffled off to another church. You know, they'll go from working on staff at this Bible college to working at a different Bible college, and then they go to a different Bible college, and a scandal is hidden. Whereas the new IFB just openly exposes scandal. Just what, whatever, if somebody is caught being wicked, being perverted, being predator, or even just, you know, if a pastor is, is abusing his position as pastor and, and in, involved in wicked sin, we blow the whistle on that. And we've received criticism for that. But you know what? I believe that if a pastor who's in a public position of trust is out, say, visiting prostitutes, stealing money from the church, gambling and stuff like that, that has to be publicly exposed. Okay. Not that he just, oh, just be put in the ministry somewhere else or, oh, let's sweep that under the rug. And then also in our church, there have been just laymen who have been found out to be predators, perverts. What a, you know, they are not only thrown out of the church, but they're publicly exposed and turned over to the police. Okay. So that's our policy is that uh, it, we expose the scandal. You say, well, that makes Christianity look bad. Well, you know what? It's not the people that are exposing wickedness that make Christianity look bad. It's people who are doing the wickedness. That's their fault for doing those wicked things. Uh, us blowing the whistle, you know, we're not responsible for the black eye that it gives Christianity. I'll tell you what really gives Christianity a black eye is this right here. And, you know, lately the old IFB has been in hot water for this because different journalists and reporters have been putting out uh, exposés showing how they've hidden scandal. And, you know, we as Baptists, we don't want to get a reputation like the Roman Catholic Church or something for, for covering up for weirdos. We need to adopt this policy. And look, there are some guys that I would classify as old IFB that are that are good on this. Like, for example, you know, Pastor Stacy Shiflett, he just put out a great book um, called, I think, Wolves Among Lambs or something, where he, you know, takes this position right here. We got to expose the skin. So again, th this is just in general. These are not exact. This is just kind of a generality of old IFB versus new IFB. So there are gonna be exceptions to these things. On both sides, there are gonna be exceptions to these things. I'm just giving you kind of a general overview of the differences between these uh, two groups. Okay, so what else have we got here? Well, the old IFB is is, is pretty pro-Republican in their politics. Like they, they'll really just support whoever the Republican candidate is, I mean, I don't care if it's a Mormon. I don't care if it's, you know, just a, a totally wicked person in their personal life. Um, it doesn't matter what their policies are. It doesn't matter uh, what they'll do. They have this kind of lesser of two evils attitude and they end up being very pro-Republican. Whereas the new IFB tends to be against both parties and just has a position that says, look, you know, both of these parties are so far from righteousness, so far from the uh, limited government that our founders envisioned that, you know, we, we can't get behind either of them because the, the, the Republican Party is just for big government. It's, it's totally become immoral and, and wicked in so many ways. 
you know, and also what, what would go hand in hand with this is that, you know, the new IFB is typically more anti-war and kind of a more of a, uh, um, a Ron Paul type Republican view. And uh, we're against the, the military industrial complex and the warfare state, you know, call us conspiracy theorists or whatever. Whereas the, the um, old IFB tends to be more hawkish and, and um, you know, just kind of towing the Republican party line on those type of issues. All right, and then the next thing is that the old IFB is pretty big on using birth control, okay? So, I mean, when I was in Bible college, they actually had a meeting for all of the single girls where they uh, explained birth control to them, taught them how to use birth control, and required them to go to that meeting and required them to see a, a doctor that was on the staff of the college at the clinic, you know, to get their birth control. I've heard sermons talking about how it's irresponsible for you to have too many kids and stuff like that. Uh, at the very least, 99% of old IFB just won't say anything about birth control. They just won't even talk about it. Whereas the new IFB is against birth control. Now, this is one where we're getting back to actually the roots of the IFB anyway, because if you read Dr. John R. Rice's book called The Home, which I believe was published in like 1946, and he is a big name in the old IFB. I mean, he was he was a really well-known, he's a household name if you're an independent fundamental Baptist. And John R. Rice is strongly against birth control. He has like three chapters condemning it in his book on the home. So we're actually getting back to his uh, position on that, which the, the position that everybody used to have as a Bible-believing Christian. And then uh, another big difference between the old IFB and the new IFB is that the, the old IFB will preach sermons where they just have like a text verse or a text of like three or four verses where they'll literally preach an entire sermon just based off that one text. So they'll they'll read one verse or five verses at the beginning of the sermon. And they that's literally the only Bible that they'll use in the entire sermon sometimes. Or maybe they'll pepper in a verse or two. Maybe you'll turn to two, three places. If you're lucky, you might get eight or 10 Bible verses or something in a sermon. Whereas in the new IFB, there's a lot of Bible in the sermon. The sermons are a lot more expository by nature, you know, going verse by verse through the Bible. And typical sermons amongst the new IFB will have approximately 50 to 60 verses in them. You know, if you stop and count the Bible verses in a lot of these sermons, you're gonna find somewhere between 40 and 60 verses in the majority of sermons either quoted from memory or read out loud um, in toto, you know, 40 plus verses, as opposed to maybe just a text verse or a little text that they read at the beginning, and then they don't use a whole lot of Bible after that. Another big difference between these two movements is that the old IFB is into Bible college, okay? They want you to go to Bible college, and this is a big thing for them, whereas the new IFB believes in uh, being trained for ministry in the local church, okay? So if you want to become a pastor, if you want to become a missionary, if you want to go into full-time Christian service, then you actually just get that training in your local church. And also the pastors in the, in the new IFB believe in teaching all the heavy Bible doctrine just in church. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, they'll teach the heavy doctrine. Whereas the old IFB will shy away from some of that doctrine and say, hey, you got to go to Bible college to learn that stuff. So Bible college versus local church. And then obviously another big difference is Christian school versus homeschool. Okay. So, you know, the new IFB is all about homeschooling, whereas the old IFB is into the Christian school. And not only is the new IFB into uh, homeschooling, but we're also into... Um, not vaccinating our children and um, taking a more alternative view to medicine sometimes, such as having home birth and, you know, breastfeeding the baby and doing things more naturally and holistically. Whereas the old IFB is, is more just kind of a standard vaccinate and just follow whatever the mainstream uh, medical ideas are of the day. So anyway, you know, I, this is not conclusive or exhaustive. I, I'm sure that there are a lot of things 
that I missed or, or didn't think of. But but let me just say this, you know, the new IFB inherited a lot of good things from the old IFB, the, the King James, the soul winning, the hard preaching, the clothing standards, the traditional music, the, the sound Baptist doctrine of salvation by faith alone, eternal security of the believer, the Trinity, and uh, the verbal inspiration of the Bible, the preservation of the Bible, you know, all these great doctrines that we've kept. And then these things that we've changed, the things that, that we've actually uh, deviated from what the old IFB had done in the previous generation are an improvement in every case. If, if you actually compare these things side by side, you'll see that in every case we've gotten uh, closer to the Word of God. We've actually tightened things up and improved things. Like take post-trib versus pre-trib. So they have this escapist, weak, watered-down, pre-trib rapture doctrine of basically we get to leave before it all hits the fan and, and before the Antichrist starts persecuting Christians and, and killing Christians. You know, so it's this escapist fantasy. We have the realistic biblical view of a post-tribulation rapture where we're going to go through the persecution and tribulation and suffering that leads up to the second coming of Christ, as opposed to the old IFB that's just like, hey, any day now, you know, we can just go from our comfortable American life, just boom, we're up in heaven like that. You know, they're uh, splitting up the family into Sunday school and nursery. That's unbiblical. You know, we've got the stronger position of having our babies and children in the service listening to preaching they're watered down on the lgbt you know we are taking a hard biblical line and by the way that's ex we take the exact same line on the sodomites that they took in the 1990s and um you know in the 1990s the preaching that we do in the new ifb would have been at home in any old ifb church in regard to the sodomites uh, as far as being zionist and pro-jewish you know that's a new doctrine that came out in the late 1800s. And so we're just, you know, rebooting that, resetting that to what Christians have believed before the late 19th century. So, um, you know, we're just bringing that back to a biblical view. And, and you know, they're so confused on that issue because, you know, on out of one side of their mouth, they have to admit that anyone who rejects Jesus Christ has God's wrath abiding on them. But then all of a sudden they're under some special blessing from God, even though they reject and hate Jesus doesn't make any sense uh when it comes to hiding the scandal i mean come on any idiot knows that that's a stupid policy to have and that they should be exposing it pro-republican come on the republican party isn't what it used to be birth control again that's modernistic worldly covetousness that led us into that junk we've tightened that up and gotten more conservative on that using more bible local church homeschool we are more conservative in every area, they are watered down. They have gotten more progressive and liberal. And let me just make a prediction about the future of the independent fundamental Baptist movement. All of independent fundamental Baptists, whether they lean more new IFB or whether they lean more old IFB, let me just make a prediction is that they're gonna go one of two directions, okay? The old IFB cannot continue the way it is for long. It's dying. It's on the decline. Okay, most of the churches are getting smaller. They're struggling. They're having trouble getting new churches off the ground in many cases. They're going to have to either go one of two directions, and we're already seeing this happen. And I've been predicting this um, for over 13 years now. I've been predicting that this is what was going to happen, that it's going to go one of two ways. There's going to be a group within the Independent Fundamental Baptists that want to tighten things up, get back to the old paths, preach hard, endure the persecution, stand tall, and uh, full speed ahead, you know, ramp up the soul winning, don't scale it back. Um, the, the, that crowd that's basically, that's the new IFB, by the way, that I'm describing, okay? There's going to be that crowd, and then there's going to be the crowd that invigorates their movement by going liberal. And that's what we're seeing. A lot of independent fundamental Baptists now, they're ditching the clothing standards. They're ditching the traditional music. They're ditching the King James only. They're scaling back the soul winning. They're not preaching hard. So they're ditching all this stuff. So basically, 
the old IFB just needs to come to grips with the fact that 20 years from now, there's not going to be just a carbon copy of the old IFB. It's not going to happen. That movement has an expiration date on it. It's already expired and expiring and it's dying. So, you know, in order for the, the IFB to grow, it has to be renewed, revived, reinvigorated. That's what the new IFB is. It's a revival, a renewal, tightening things up. And it's, it's an IFB for this generation. Okay. It's an IFB that's spirit-led now, today, in 2019, being led by the Holy Spirit. Whereas, okay, the other idea that people have for reinvigorating, renewing, is basically, hey, let's bring people in by watering things down. But if you just want to have a carbon copy of the 1960s, 1970s, 1980s IFB, and you just want to keep that going until Jesus comes, it, it's not working. It's not going to work. And that's why the churches are getting smaller. They're failing. They're struggling because God expects us to grow. If we're not growing, we're dying. Okay. If we're not learning, we're getting dumber. So you can't just lock it in and freeze it in and, hey, we're all going to be carbon copies of John R. Rice. And we're going to be carbon copies of Jack Hiles. And we're going to be carbon copies of whoever their heroes are from the previous generation, Lee Robertson. Uh, you know, and hey, these guys did a lot of great things, but you can't just be a carbon copy of them. We need men of God for this generation. And in this generation, things are going two ways. You know, you either get on board with the new IFB that's learning and growing and tightening things up, fixing the mistakes of the previous generation, and, you know, looking forward to doing new and great things for God, but staying with the old stuff, staying with the old paths, you know, but just correcting things that needed to be corrected, that obviously needed to be corrected, that are not biblical. Or they're going to ditch all the good tradition and just become totally feminine, lame, watered down. And that's what most of the IFB Bible colleges are churning out now. A bunch of pink and lavender shirt wearing, sissified uh, preachers that can't preach their way out of a wet paper bag and they just can't wait for the old timers to die off the scene so they can switch to the new King James and they can bring in the worldly music and ditch the clothing. standards. I mean, they've already ditched the clothing standards in a lot of these places. Uh, it's already happening. It's already going contemporary and liberal. So anyway, I hope that this video kind of helps you understand where we're coming from as the quote unquote new IFB. And look, new IFB is not even really like a thing. I mean, it's it's not an organization that anybody joins or anything. It's just basically when you when you step back and look at it from the outside and you look at independent fundamental Baptists, you kind of see that there's a certain group of independent Baptists that are different than the rest. And it's a new resurgence, revival, renewal. So that's come to be called the new IFB. And then everybody else is just kind of the old IFB, you know, the, the IFB of the previous generation. And so, you know, this will help you understand some of the similarities and differences, I hope. God bless you. Have a great day.